Hello there, and welcome to another Replay Roundup episode. I'm being joined by Ixta, my name's Keyhand, and today I think we got a special little treat, the Tier 9 Chieftain Proto. Indeed we do. This is a Tier 9 Premium Vehicle Tank, which would have been available to people through the Waffentrigger Legacy game mode if they got Engineer Starters. That being said, let's head straight into the gameplay, shall we? Alright, so we are spawned on a Lakeville without Arty, so uh, right from the get-go, I would say, correct decision, let's head to the valley, because, uh, let's be honest, what does the tank do good? Well, being hull down and uh, sort of stationary, because it isn't the fastest ever in the world, and then, uh, you know, just trying to duke it out with uh, his counterpart, and probably also the T8 vehicle. Uh, vehicles in this match here, um, pretty nice matchmaking. Um, as I said, no RT, so nothing really that could punish him there, except uh, for possibly himself misplaying. We'll have to see, but as you selected uh, this episode, or this replay rather, I guess we can expect some pretty nice things here. Indeed. Now, for those who don't know, the Chieftain uh, prototype has about, I think the lowest you can bring the reload is around 9.2, 9.3-ish seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, already taking a shot from the CC Mark II, who, you know, honestly, perfect placement by himself, uh, the enemy CC right there, the Cattle Combatimente, taking that position there on that little uh, island, uh, allowing him to get shots over the top. Cobra tries to get a cheeky shot in, only does 30 damage with the premium HG rounds, followed up by 83, and now he's only got two shots left, so not too much of a threat. Putting a nice, beautiful shot straight through the center of the Lantern's turret there, uh, and continuing to play on the ridgeline here, uh, which is a relatively new addition to the map, by the way. Yeah, it was uh, rebalanced, so basically this top position here in the uh, E1 position can be played by both sides now, and he's uh, making very, very good use of this. The uh, SHPTK there with a shot onto him, but he does retaliate, and obviously, even though the SHPTK uh, does have pretty good pen as it's a tank destroyer, um, yeah, basically no one really able to penetrate his turret here. They would need to hit the Capola, which uh, the more gun depression you use, basically the smaller it becomes, relatively speaking. Um, so yeah, pretty good gameplay here so far, putting in shot after shot. The only thing holding him back right now is his own DPM. Yes, indeed. And as we were saying, about nine seconds is the lowest you can bring it down to, or just over nine seconds. Uh, so it is it is not necessarily the most fastest firing tank uh, with 400 alpha damage. But all in all, it's a pretty decent platform. Uh, honestly, I enjoy playing it for the most part. I think the aim time and dispersion can be a tiny bit of a pain. But clearly, this guy's making great use of it because already within the first two and a half minutes into the game, he's already on two and a half K damage. Mm -hmm. The second kill shot there on the SHPTK, naturally not connecting. Um, but yeah, we'll see what he does here. He does see the Cobra again, but I think the Cobra doesn't have the gun depression. Aims for the SHPTK again, does get the connection and the Cobra once again. 33 damage. I would say not the most effective use of the hash shells there. No, definitely not. Lovely Ooh, shot nice the overmatch. Side. Indeed, lovely overmatch into the side of the 53 TP there. Now, of course, the big threat right now is uh, overpeaking and potentially getting tagged by the Ferdinand or by this Jagdtiger, who just bounces a shot and catches one in return for 446. Love to see that. And so far, 3.6k damage and nothing, uh, no huge mistakes that I've seen so far. On the topic of this position that's been, uh, uh, been adjusted uh, in one of the recent updates, so both players can play on it, picking up a nice kill there on the Cobra, by the way. Um, you used to be able to get up into this sort of position and play it from this side, but it required boosting into the position, which was very risky to do. So it's nice to see this change and nice to see this Chieftain prototype making good use out of this position so far. But now he's tracked in the open for the Yagtiga, adjusts his hull as soon as his track comes up, and he's going to try and peek to try and return fire, but takes one in Ooh. return for 580. Not yeah, I don't know if you've played the Yagtiga recently, but that gun, to be honest, it is sort of the best gun that you can experience on uh, on tier 9. He's using AP right now, but I think with the APCR 352 pen, you could even go through the turret of the Chieftain probably. So he needs to be a bit careful. Um, so far the Yak Tiger though, mostly bouncing and uh, our hero here is starting to rack up damage as well as, uh, to be honest, a bit of block here. Almost 1900 already. And his team not really doing too great. 3 versus 2 the scoreline right now. Um, but yeah, himself having done uh, two kills so far, uh, so two-thirds 
We'll see how this one goes. The enemy is now starting to lose in the city as well. I don't agree with the decision of their chieftain to go to the city because, yes, the chieftain is a good tank. It can be very, very nice hull down, but the bulge below the turret doesn't really make it a good side scraper. Indeed. Uh, I found that this thing gets penned a lot whenever it tries to side scrape due to that hull profile. Uh, I also find that sometimes the turret can get overmatched by slightly higher caliber tanks. I've had the roof somehow and several times over in the past few days uh so that is something you have to be mindful of but so far because this guy's got the higher position here it's making it very hard for the opponents to actually get any penetrating shots on him and he's doing a very good job right now but he does need to be careful 509 hp he is a potential one shot for that yag tiger so it's just a matter of being safe deciding when to peek and when to shoot and it looks like right now he's gonna go for it, it gets a lovely 399 shot in and the yag tiger does not pen in return that puts him at 2.9k block damage as well but as you can see the right side of the map not looking too great right now. I mean, you did say a moment ago that it looked like they were starting to lose, but it looks like a Tiger 2 is moving into support, LT432 is moving into support, and they're down to just the projectile on the flank there. As our protagonist here tries to pick up the kill on the Jagdiga, doesn't quite manage to connect the shot, and the Ferdinand now baring his teeth at the Chieftain prototype, reminding him, hey, I'm here, don't forget about me, otherwise you're going to have a very rough day, my friend. Hmm. Ooh, that was quite a lucky shot there into the Yak Tiger as he uh, does sort of nudge himself onto the stone, but he gets the penetration in the superstructure regardless. And uh, we'll have to see, does he go for the kill onto the um, 53 TP? He doesn't, so now he's eyeing towards the Yak Tiger. As soon as that uh, Yak Tiger is gone, then he'll sort of have free reign here because then no one else can really one-shot him anymore and he could farm into uh, the upper sides of the other tanks. Ooh! tries to go there for it both of them react both of them bounce though so uh yeah i guess at the end of this nothing really did happen indeed i mean this he is to... this is a classic like mexican standoff situation between the Yagtiga and the chieftain p they both know they can both one shot each other it's just a matter of who's gonna take the risk of trying to get that shot and it looks like our our player here and the chieftain prototype is really trying to take that Yagtiga out going for even the smallest of shots right now there's not much else for him to do right now and as you can see the back of the map is losing and now he finally gets to secure so hopefully we'll start seeing some developments on this side of the map as the enemies are slowly approaching from the eastern flank towards his capture zone yeah he does put a shot into the contra caro now alerting him of his presence he's still above him though so he should be fine you see he's going for the next peak the contra caro does get the connection in the track though luckily for him he did have the repair kit up but now he needs to be ever more careful and the problem is as you mentioned in the uh, southern part of the map the enemies are encroaching onto um the allied base so as soon as that happens and yeah another kill here onto the kb4 by the enemy team as soon as that happens his position up here is completely compromised so they need to sooner rather than later finish this fight off here so they can turn and actually engage the tanks now coming from the city uh we'll have to see how our hero here socks um is able to do that he does see the cupola here of the 53 tp decides not to go for it and obviously he needs to be wary of that ferdinand in the back could you say that uh key could you say that socks is gonna have to pull up his socks now i mean he's certainly gonna have to put on some carry pants if he does want to get this one uh into the bag for him now he does use the rock here nice and yeah, he does use it nicely, puts one more shot into the Contra Caro, but still 752 HP with uh, 400 alpha, that is a two shot. And if the Contra Caro decides to go for it, then uh, he would probably be dead here. But no, the Contra Caro actually shooting into the Löwe, um, which does mean that he is able to get one more connection. And obviously that Italian TD with a long intra clip reload, um, that just means that he can peek freely there. The, uh, he does pick it up now, so it's two one shots remaining, but that doesn't change the fact that he's also so on 68 HP. He is also on 68 HP and there is still a relatively healthy Ferdinand sitting back there just waiting for his opportunity to kill this Chieftain prototype. And once again, another tank in the spawn went down. The T30 teammate is now dead as well. So now it's a matter of really the pressure starting to stack up. All there is left defending the base is the Scorpion G and the Yaktiga. He's realized Ooh. he needs to make a play, goes over the top, takes out the 53 TP. That was a high risk but high reward situation because now he can go over the top and try to pick up the kill on the TNH here who just fired at the Lerva. And now it's a matter of keep going, moving forwards. Don't stop in the open there, otherwise the Ferdinand might peek and shoot you. Instead, keep moving forwards, force the Ferdinand to overcommit if he wants the shot. But it looks like he's left this position. No, there he is. And he's looking the other way at the Lerva and that allows him to get a beautiful shot in. But the Lerva does go down in return. Now it's a one-on-one -on -one engagement here on the two line between this Ferdinand and the Chieftain prototype. Ferdinand, a two-shot, maybe, mm, I don't think he'll be a three-shot, but two-shot at the very least. 
and the Chieftain P are one shot. He needs to be very careful here, but making a wonderful use of his turret armor, wonderful use of his gun depression to get a nice shot into the super uh, structure of the Ferdinand. He's going to try and go for it again. He does get it, and it is going to be a three shot situation for the Ferdinand. But the Ferdinand realizing he needs to back up a tiny bit more and move into better cover trying to edge behind the ridge line here and it's going to force the chieftain to try and make a peek at a very risky angle if he wants to get a shot here he's got to be very careful about this and he manages to get it that was okay he does get the penetration here and i do like his decision making now he's sort of waiting is there someone coming to support the ferdinand obviously he cannot push past the uh, enemy base at this point because the t30 has been unspotted for like Five minutes more. Uh, anyway, what feels like an eternity, the Allies actually able to pick up the Emil one. So now we're left in a 4v2 situation, but this is by far not one. There is no information about the HP uh, that the T30 still has available. The uh, Semovente there, um, the other enemy is on a one shot. We can confirm as much, but yeah, that T30 can easily just turn around the game by uh, just one shotting every single tank that is on the team of uh, our Chieftain Proto here, even the Yacht Tiger. Um, 573 HP. T30 has 750 alpha, so he wouldn't care. And possibly even if the T30 decides to load HE, that could be yeah, detrimental uh, towards our Chief 10 Proto here as 68. Yeah, the HE was changed, but um, I think the, the T30 HE is like 950 or even over a thousand alpha, so that shouldn't matter. It uh, doesn't matter the armor impact that he should be able to pick him up with that. And now the Actiga deciding to make a play. We can also see on the minimap the LT-432 through the four line is able to generate the information that the Semovente did move away. Um, Beautiful communication so we'll have here, by the see. way. The Jagdtiger decided to ask for support as he started repushing, so the Chieftain P turns around and also asks the Scorpion G for help, who responds with, sure, I'll help as well. And now all three of them are making a push once again down the 1-2 line, because as you, as you know, uh, there is safety in numbers here as they all approach. The T30 and SMV CC can take one of them out, or two of them out, but they're not going to be able to take all of them out immediately. And there's the Semovente, and down goes the Semovente as he puts a shot into the Scorpion G, leaving the Scorpion G on 16 HP. And now all that is left is a T30. The LT432 goes straight up the middle, pulls off to the left to check the A2 section, going full speed with some serious confidence. As we can see, the T30 is not there, meaning there is only one place the T30 can be, and that's going to be the 9 0 line. So now we'll have to see what they do here. But keep in mind, our player here is on 8.9k damage with 1.4k assist and 8 kills so far. This has been an absolute stunning game so far. And now he's just going to go into the cap circle. It looks like the Scorpion G is probably going to stay here. But it looks like the Chieftain has no patience here to sit around in the cap circle. He's going to go for it to try and hunt down this T30 for that ninth kill. Exactly, we do see him driving towards the city, the LT-432, providing a nice uh, spotting screen for our hero. And uh, the T-30, actually, in the meantime, he could theoretically have gone on to the Allied cap. Uh, we'll have to see, though, um, what exactly happens as the LT-432 just... Uh, yeah, doesn't really seems to have any crabs left to give. He j he's just booking it down in the city here on the zero line. Nope. Just trying to get that information on the T-30. Where is that T-30 is the question. That is indeed the question. And, you know, honestly, the LT going this fast around every corner gives me a bit of anxiety. I feel like it's going to go around the corner. And we're just going to see that little red dot pop up on the minimap and the LT get destroyed. But we'll have to see. And there it is. There's a T30, but he manages to secure the kill. It looked like the T30 only had 8 HP or so. Uh, and that's going to be four kills for the LT432. Fair play to him as well. But that's going to be the end of this game. So let's head over to the endgame screen. All right, so here we go. Obviously, uh, 9k damage, 8 kills. That's going to be an ace tanker if I've ever seen one. Then we do have Spotter, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire 4 effect, Shellproof, and then 8 kills gives you the Radley Walters medal that does come with the Top Gun as well. And then High Caliber and the Steel Wall to go with it. Perfectly played, um, just making use of a very, very good position, controlling the enemies, reading the lineups right, to be honest, as well. There was no artillery, so you're not going to get punished for doing that and uh the team score i mean yeah he just put the team on his back and then started carrying he really did with 1.9k base xp 1973 to be exact almost 2k base xp in a chieftain prototype and considering that this thing is a tier, a tier 9 premium vehicle uh let's go take a look at the detailed report to see how much credits he made he did fire a lot of premium rounds but he made 34,000 uh profit which honestly 
you can't complain of that if you're firing full gold and you manage to make 34k profit that is you know you take that that's uh extra money into the bank for his account basically for his uh credit balance in world of tanks uh 35 shots fired 30 direct hits, not too bad, 27 penetrations, pretty good performance all in all, with 4,600 damage blocked, uh, and spotting six enemy vehicles, by the way, <laughs> not something you see very often in heavy tanks, but, you know, the enemies took the fight on the 1-2 line, there was no artillery, and as you said, it was spectacular uh, awareness of the lineups that were available on both teams, and realizing that there was an open flank for him to completely bully on and dominate on, and he did, getting 8,945 damage. You love to see it when these sort of games happen, you gotta feel happy for the player, but that is all from us for today. Once again, if you guys want to submit your replays, don't forget to put replay roundup in the title when you upload to what replays uh, and that being said, we hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to let us know what you think about the replay down below in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. We'll see you in the next one.